everybody. It's Old Man Van. I'm back. And guess what? You're in my house. Why are you in my house? Because normally when you're in my house, it's because something came in the mail. Hmm. What could that be? Let me guess. Is it some junk mail? Uh, not quite. Is it a bill? Thankfully, no. What could it be? Maybe? Hmm. Is it something running related? Maybe that's it. Let's see. Here we go. What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? No! Look at that! It's a box! It's a sockety box! We all know what that means, don't we? It's a new pair of running shoes! So, full disclosure. Yeah, Old Man Vance purchased another pair of running shoes. Every time I say I'm done buying running shoes for a while, another new pair of running shoes or an update comes out that I look at and go, man, that is kind of interesting. And being a stability runner, you know, you'd think that doesn't happen all that often. But in this case, Saucony has done it to me. So let's see what is in the box. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's open that box and see what's inside. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Paperwork again. Let's get rid of that stuff. Just paperwork. Oh, I see some yellow there. And I see some red. Let's open that beautiful wrapping and... Whoa, look at this, look at this. It's this beautiful yellow color with a white or off-white midsole. And some black and red overlays and logos. And ooh, a red and black outsole. What is this shoe? This here is the brand new, and I'm talking brand new. It's a brand new shoe, Saucony Tempest. This is a mild to moderate stability daily trainer, a brand new one from Saucony. And old man Van has purchased this beauty and is gonna test it out over the next couple of days. I'm in my marathon training and need some fresh pairs of stability shoes. I have the Guide 15 in my rotation, the Arahi 6 in my rotation, and I just purchased and reviewed, first impressions, the Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. So now, the Saucony Tempest, I've heard nothing but great things about, that this shoe is raising the bar for lightweight, responsive stability shoes. Welcome back to Old Man Van Running. I hope you enjoyed that little unboxing video and that slideshow of the all new Saucony Tempest. Mild to moderate stability daily trainer. Hey, this is a real step up from your traditional stability shoes. And I'm really excited to get into the innovative changes that Saucony's built into this shoe. But before we do that, I took this shoe on a six mile marathon pace training run on my favorite paved trail here in Connecticut. So let's roll the footage. Hey everybody. So I am here at the Farmington Canal Trail in Cheshire, Connecticut, getting ready to do my six mile marathon pace run today. That's what's on the schedule. Day six of week three. 
Uh, today I am wearing the brand new Saucony Tempest. Mild to moderate stability daily trainers, nice and light. Power Run PB along with Power Run instead of like a medial post or some hard plastic stability feature. So really excited to try these shoes out today. It'll be the very first run. So I'm gonna take you along with me. Um, pace today is eight minutes per mile to 8.30 per mile. And uh, I'll talk to you out there on the trail. So I just started the run. Man, these got some bounce and some cushion to them. So feeling very quick in these shoes much more cushion and bounce than the Saucony Guide 15s. So let's see how they go. Over a mile and a half in. Really, really fun shoes. Love them, light bouncy, cushioned, um, not overly cushioned. Just feeling really, really good. More bounce than I expected. Just really like them. Everybody else out here on the trail. So how did the all new Saucony Tempest perform? Let me tell you, what a change to the traditional stability platforms. Man, with that, power run pb underfoot under the heel and under the forefoot and with that power run that regular power run a little bit firmer under the medial side of the foot kind of wrapping up on both sides medial and lateral side to support your foot and a very wide base this is a light and responsive shoe um i'm telling you it's raising the bar for every other shoe brand uh, with stability shoes and stability features that are not obtrusive, intrusive, whatever you want to call them. So, very, very impressed. And you know me, uh, I'm probably a little too effusive in my praise of many of the shoes because the technology is so good. But, you know, if I use this as my bar, um, it's going to knock all the other shoes down a few notches. So, very, very impressed. Um, you know, we'll talk about it more in my first impressions, but first running them and it just felt wonderful, wonderful. Something I've never felt before and I'm just extremely impressed. Okay, we're back. As you can see, a very good first run in the all new Saucony Tempest. But before we get into the innovations that Saucony's built into this all new stability trainer, Let's just go over some of the basic specifications. First of all is price. As you know, inflation's hitting, everything's going up left and right. Running shoes are no different. Previously, I could buy a stability daily trainer for $130 easy. These days they're creeping up, $140, $150, $160 US for the Saucony Tempest, just like the Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. That's a significant amount of coin for a pair of running shoes. So that pair of running shoes better be durable, better be good. Going on to the weight of this shoe. The Saucony Tempest is 8.9 ounces in a men's size nine. That equals, I believe, 252 grams for you metric folks out there. And that's pretty darn light for a daily stability trainer. If you recall, the Saucony Guide 15 the 14 was originally like over 10 ounces, and then the Saucony Guide 15 was down about nine and a half ounces, and now we've gone all the way down to 8.9 ounces, and that's pretty darn light for a stability daily trainer, so pretty impressive. Going on to stack height. This is not a max stack height, meaning it's not 39 and a half millimeters, you know, right up against the limit, but it's pretty darn good. It's 36.5 millimeters in the rear foot, 28.5 millimeters in the forefoot for a heel to toe drop of eight millimeters. And if you've heard me before and watched my other videos, you know that I think the sweet spot for heel to toe drop is eight millimeters. And that's right smack dab where Saucony's put this shoe. 
So now that we've talked about the basic specifications in the all new Saucony Tempest, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this shoe. First of all, let's talk about the upper. This upper is not the thinnest upper out there. There were thinner uppers, and I think even the uh, Saucony Guide 15 might be even a little bit thinner. However, this upper is pretty pliable, engineered mesh, feels really good here, and you can see, feels really good. Uh, it does have some ventilation. You can see the cuts here in the upper in the forefoot. I took this on a pretty warm run. I didn't feel like my feet were overheating at all. So there seems to be plenty of airflow in the forefoot. There's not much in the way of overlays. There are some strategically placed overlays in the toe area and around the sides of the foot in those high wear, high contact areas around like your little toe and things like that. But they're not overdone whatsoever. In the midfoot, there also aren't a ton of overlays or real thick overlays. You've got a little bit here in the logo, nothing much. They're not intended to add structure to the midfoot. So that helps keep the weight down as well. Where you do get a little more of the overlays is back here, right? So you've got this little mesh loop. Instead of the strap that you see on the Guide 15, you have this strap that's overlaid down here towards the heel. As you cinch down those laces, it does pull up and give you a better lockdown around the midfoot. You also have some overlays and structure around the medial and lateral side of the heel, which gives a little structure to that heel counter. Fit-wise, plenty of room in the toe box. I didn't feel I had any problems with my toes splaying. Feet didn't feel constricted whatsoever. Well, plenty of room in there. I didn't feel that it was too narrow or too wide in the midfoot. I got a real good lockdown. And one thing that helps with that is the footbed in the Saucony Tempest, kind of like in the Guide 15, is down kind of cradled into that midsole. So your foot kind of gets cradled in there and then this wraps around the midfoot and you've got those little mesh tabs with like a strap that kind of locks it in. The ankle and heel collar, plenty of padding, but not as much padding as some of the other shoes. Not as much padding as the Guide 15, not as much padding as most of the daily stability trainers that I have tested, but still plenty enough padding in there, but they've removed a little, which is good, saves a little bit of weight. The heel does ride up a little bit. There's not a pronounced flare, but it is a little high. Some people have commented that they have some heel rub there. I wear socks that are typically above my ankles and higher than that, so I'm not having any issues. I'm not feeling that my heel is moving around and having too much friction, so I'm not having a problem. I would just suggest if you do have issues with heel rub and that sort of thing, that maybe you might want to consider wearing socks other than like the no -seam socks, but by all means test it out. I didn't have any problem in the first few runs. I already mentioned that form fit sock liner. Again, it sits down cradled into the midsole. That's really good. It gives you some structure there. That adds some of the stability and you know, it really makes your foot feel like it's cupped in there and really snuggled in that upper. Heel counter, very well structured for a shoe so light, right? And even more structured than some of the other stability shoes that are much heavier. Very, very structured here. It's a little bit softer up top, but it gives you a real, real nice lockdown around the heel. I did not feel it was so stiff that it created, again, abrasion problems with my heel or my ankle or anything like that. It didn't dig into my ankle at all. Felt very comfortable, but it is nice and well structured. Moving on to the tongue. A nicely padded tongue, albeit less padded than in the Guide 15 and then again in most of the stability daily trainers out there. It's got some good padding. It's not overdone. Feels very comfortable. It's not minimalist. It's kind of a good happy medium between minimalist and heavily padded tongues. 
It is gusseted, as you can see in there, so that's good. Keeps it from moving around too much, which is excellent. So no problems there. Thank you, Saucony. I love flat laces, as you know, and these laces are flat, right? And I'm gonna tell you, see, no stretch, no stretch, no stretch. Just what I like in my laces. Flat laces, no stretch. Reason being, when I lock them down, I want them to stay locked down. I don't want them kind of coming loose and then I have to stop during my run to go down and adjust my laces. I just don't like that. The laces are plenty long enough, as you can see. Plenty long enough, not too long. Plenty long enough so that I can loop them up here and I can loop them through that last eyelet, loop them back through, do that runner's knot or that marathon knot and double lace them like I like to do them. Not double lace them, double knot them. Overall, this shoe fits me true to size. A little more room in the toe box than I think in the Guide 15, but not too much, not too roomy. My foot doesn't swim around. Just feels really nice and comfortable. Kind of a glove-like fit on my foot. One other thing about this upper that I really like, very eco-friendly. Most of this upper is made from recycled materials, so a lot of the shoe companies are doing that. That's a great, great thing. It makes me feel better about spending 160 big ones. So that brings me to the most innovative part of this shoe and where I think <laughs> Saucony has knocked it out of the park. And that is this midsole configuration. First of all, Saucony has taken two of their best midsole materials, combine them together to create what I think is just a perfect blend of softness, responsiveness, and guess what? Some firmness in there, but not too much. Just a really good blend that gives you kind of everything you would want in a versatile running shoe. So right down here in the heel, more so on the lateral side, and then right here on the medial side. This is Power Run PB. This is the responsive, well-cushioned, really springy midsole material that's in the Endorphin Pro 3. And man, let me tell you, that's a really nice feel when you heel strike. There's more of it on the lateral side, as I said, because we're gonna get to the stability features and how that's really innovative in a moment. But this Power Run PB, it's soft, but springy, right? So it's not squishy, it's not marshmallowy soft. You've heard me say that before. You don't sink into it and bottom out at all, but you get that nice cushion when you heel strike. And then as you go through, it's a little bit firmer in the midsole. And then when you get to that forefoot, your foot kind of sinks in a little bit, but as you roll through, it springs you forward. It springs you forward really well. So it's a really, really cool feeling, a really fun feeling. And it really encourages you to pick up your pace, to pick up your cadence and, and run fast. You have this power on PB in the heel, and actually it moves down through the midsole. And then in the forefoot, you have the power on PB as well. But that's only one part of this midsole. The other part of the midsole is this other material that you see here. You see it here on the lateral side and you see more of it on the medial side, right around where you would normally see what? A medial post. There's no medial post here. It's not the Saucony Guide 15 that has this TPU kind of plastic arch in this one and a medial post in the 14. Nope, 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 nope. What they have here is regular power run. They have a frame of regular power run, which is the midsole material that makes up the Guide 15's midsole. And what's really cool about this is they have more of it on the medial side, right? Under your arch. And that firmer midsole material is what provides that motion control or pronation control as you're going through and foot striking. So that right there is keeping your ankle from rolling in. It's really, really cool. You see how it rides up a little bit here. It rides up on the uh, lateral side as well. And because your foot is cupped into that midsole, man, 
that provides plenty of guidance as you're going through uh, your gait cycle. That being said, it doesn't feel like you have a big block of plastic there, which is really cool. Now, because you've got that Power Run PB in the forefoot and it's softer and springier, what they've done is they've run this regular Power Run around the heel, down through the midfoot, on the sides in the shape of a frame, and then they've got these two fingers of the Power Run right here on both the medial side and the lateral side. So as you go through, you hit on that Power Run PB, which is really soft and springy, feels really good. You then roll through the midfoot on that firmer Power Run midsole material with it built up on the medial side and that controls your foot a bit. And as you go through toe off, you get that nice soft and springy sensation from the Power Run PB and with this curved outsole here and curved midsole, kind of like a, um, kind of like a rocker, but that power run on both sides, kind of like two fingers, keeps your foot from going too much to either side. So man, it really keeps you controlled without feeling like you're being controlled, which is really, really cool. But what I like about this is you're using midsole material, that's it. Just two different densities or firmnesses of midsole. So it keeps the weight down because you're not having to add plastic or any of those additional layers. And because of the way that midsole rise up on both sides and the way your foot is cupped into that midsole, they don't need to put a lot of heavy, heavy overlays in the upper to keep your foot uh, locked in and to provide some additional support. So I think Saucony has really knocked this out of the park and now is putting all the other shoe companies on notice for what a stability shoe should be. And the best part is we finally have a responsive and fast and light stability shoe. Going to the outsoles, you can see the two shoes here. Over here is the Saucony Guide 15, over here is the Saucony Tempest. If you recall from my previous reviews of the 15 and the 14, I just love the durability of these outsoles. They are freaking great. I see practically nowhere even after 100 miles in these shoes. I'm expecting similar performance from the Saucony Tempest. It's a similar material, if not the same outsole material. It's the coverage is in the same locations, although there is some exposed power run, you know, that power run that's being used for that stability feature here on the medial side of the midsole. So, you know, is that going to start wearing? I'm typically a little bit of a heel striker, but I do go to midfoot striking when I pick up the pace. So it uh, remains to be seen how durable that is going to be. But I have no qualms to say that that outsole should get very good longevity. Last few things about this midsole and outsole. What you can also see is this is a pretty wide base, right? So that also helps with the stability. There you have it, you can see. Pretty wide in the rear foot, pretty wide in the forefoot. Gives you a nice wide base. That helps with stability along with that midsole. Also, you see here, it is not the most flexible shoe, but it is not overly stiff either. And I think with that Power Run PB, that helps it be a little more flexible because it's softer material and it's not too, too thick. And, um, you know, there are some grooves. It's not really flex grooves, but there's enough give there that you have some flexibility without being overdone. So how would Old Man Van rate the all-new Saucony Tempest on first impressions? Well, I'm going to give this a pretty high score. I'm giving the Tempest a 9.75 on a scale of 10. And that's because this is the most innovative stability daily trainer to date from any shoe company. Saucony has raised the bar by changing the stability features in this running shoe to allow it to be lightweight, cushioned, responsive, a shoe that you can take any distance at any speed and be confident in. In fact, I think this shoe is versatile enough to be a racing shoe for folks that don't want to spend $250 plus on a super duper carbon fiber racing shoe. 
I think this could do well all the way up to the marathon distance. And I also think that Saucony has set the bar very high for the other running shoe companies to follow suit and start developing lightweight, responsive, yet cushioned stability shoes. So I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, remember, hit the thumbs up button. That really helps out my channel and I'm really looking to grow this channel and get more videos out there. If you didn't like it, it's okay to hit thumbs down, but please, good, bad, at least constructive, please leave comments and I will respond to everyone in a timely manner. And again, I don't think I missed anybody yet. And don't forget, you need to subscribe if you haven't already. That also helps my channel. Please subscribe. Tell your friends if you like it. All it will do is help me and help me post more videos that hopefully will provide information that my viewers will find valuable. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you will get notified when more videos are posted. So thanks again. And remember, lace up those shoes and let's get out on the roads.